Bishop Robert Barron came out late last week with some rather scathing words for traditional Catholics, meaning pretty much most of the people listening to me talk right now. This wasn't the first time he targeted the growing devotion to preconciliar norms, liturgy, teachings, and, quite frankly, the deposit of the faith. Barron has engaged in this behavior before. He is known for having previously been focused on the more ludicrous aspects of modernism, trying to counter them in the new tradition of Benedict XVI type Catholicism, but in recent months has turned his focus to the growing traditional movement, which Barron clearly doesn't understand. Today I'm going over his statement and the response that is growing from established, more moderate sounding traditional outlets and figures. I'm certain but that by the time you see this, others on this site will have responded to Barron, and to be clear, it is figures on this site principally that Barron seems most concerned with. But let's get into it. It's worth noting that Barron is of the Communio faction within the Vatican, the hermeneutic of continuity branch of modernism, with Benedict XVI as its spiritual father, and it is why it is so easy for him to say orthodox-sounding things from time to time while also penning the introduction to Pastor Jimmy Martin of the Jesuit Church's latest book on praying the Jesuit way. Barron is in the business of defending the innovations, the 1789 of the Church, as Cardinal Swendens called it at the Council, likening it to that time in France when that country discarded its traditions and embraced innovation and upheaval, only to be given Napoleon as the consequence. Barron defends the equivalent in the church, and he responds with calls for restoration the way anyone who supports the innovations and upheavals that came at that time typically does. Barron gets it wrong in a major way. Being a traditional Catholic isn't merely about the traditional Latin Mass. No, not only does he forget the existence of the Eastern liturgical traditions here, we, there are is a thriving traditional movement within the Eastern Rites as well. He also neglects to mention that the traditional liturgy is only a reflection of the embodiment of the traditional teachings of the Church in how we are to live our lives, on the nature of God and his merciful justice, on numerous theological points that to adopt them marks one as rigid and not a participant in accompanying the world. Traditional Catholicism isn't only a liturgical issue. If you describe yourself as a traditional Catholic and are only concerned about the liturgy, you haven't gotten the thrust of the matter at all. Neither evidently has Bishop Barron here, but his one main battle against traditionalists rages on, and it's a battle that he doesn't seem to understand the nature of, as evident in this excerpt from his recent article. Quote, in recent years, a fiercely traditionalist movement has emerged within American Catholicism, finding a home particularly in social media space. It has come about partly as a reaction to the same beige Catholicism that I have criticized, but its ferocity is due to the messes that have shaken the church the past 30 years, especially the McCarrick situation. In their anger and frustration, some of it justified, these arch-traditionalist Catholics have become nostalgic for the church of the pre-conciliar period and antipathetic towards the Second Vatican Council itself, Pope John XXIII, Pope Paul VI, Pope John Paul II, and particularly our present Holy Father. The supreme irony is, of course, that these traditional Catholics, these radical traditionalist Catholics, in their resistance to the authority of the Pope and their denial of the legitimacy of an ecumenical council, have risked stepping outside the confines of the Church. Theirs is not a beige Catholicism, to be sure, but it is indeed a self-devouring Catholicism. Perhaps sensing this contradiction, they remain spitting mad at anyone who would dare challenge them." End quote. Barron's errors here are numerous, but he begins by calling the traditional movement nostalgic, which is laughable, and it underlies his modernism. Nostalgia is the pining after something from the past, usually for its purely aesthetic purposes, in response to the quality of, mo of modern things lacking. Think of how many mainstream figures pine for the 1950s as if the 1950s was a decade to actually look fondly upon. It's one reason Hollywood remakes movies and rock bands these days frequently remake songs from their fairly recent past. They're bereft of ideas of their own, and that is why, not why traditionalism exists in the church and why traditional Catholicism is growing. These messes in the church in the McCarrick situation illustrated the hypothesis that has grown since the 50s when Bella Dodd came forward with Fulton Sheen that men working within the church who had no business operating in the church at all placed men in the seminaries so that they would, and eventually did, become the bishops, priests, and cardinals who would subvert the church, would take the battle they had been waging for centuries, and in their own mind anyway, win in a master stroke of subtlety. That was their aim. 
and they had been at it since at least the 18th century, if not earlier. It's why the first anti-modernism encyclicals appeared by the popes in the early 19th century. I have most, by the way, if not all of those encyclical letters on this channel, if you want to hear them for yourself. They paint a clear picture of a problem in the church. Barron is blissfully unaware of this, and likely puts that back to a question of history and likely of unproven theories. Numerous Catholic commentators have responded to this in articles. Among them is the famous Father Z, who responded after having himself been pushed out of his diocese by his own bishop. He responded to Barron's article in, on his own blog. And I have links to all this in the sources page in the show notes today at returntotradition.org, with link in the description. Father Z writes, quote, Barron starts up a cartoonish caricature of quote-unquote traditionalist movement with that vocabulary like fiercely, ferocity, anger, nostalgic, <laughs> that dang chestnut again, antipathetic, radically, self-devouring, spitting mad. His word choice calls to mind their defamatory imagery of yesteryear, unappealing characters marked with recognizably evil logos loom all over that is good and true. The beige are on the left, the trads are on the right. We must battle the forces of evil to protect the middle. End quote. And that is accurate. Mr. Bishop Barron is a, is, could be called Bishop Fence Sitter. That has been his brand for decades now, daring to appear as the reasonable one, all the while he has rejected the tenets of the faith in a very public matter. Most notably, when he appeared on a show, on the internet, and on camera, was asked by the host if he himself needed to become Catholic in order to attain eternal life. To which Barron replied that Christ is the privileged path. Barron contradicted our blessed Lord, who said that no one gets to the Father except through him. That's a bit different, and in so doing has at least implicitly rejected a dogma of the faith. I'm sure some will say he did so explicitly. Maybe he did. Another response to Barron came from Eric Sammons, the new editor-in-chief over at Crisis Magazine, which has drifted these days a bit more towards traditional thought than it had in the past, and that is a good thing. Sammons penned an article for the site responding to Barron's erroneous characterization of the traditional movement, which Barron describes as moribund, and that's frankly laughable. In his article, Salmon writes, quote, Barron hasn't kept his finger on the pulse of traditionalism. It's a booming, joyful group of people who want exactly what Barron first promoted, a faith that's no longer watered down to conform with the surrounding culture. Why is Barron so wrong in his assessment of the traditionalist movement? Some of his error is understandable. It's true that traditional Catholics have long had a reputation for being mean and judgmental. This reputation is partially justified. From the early 1970s until Pope Benedict's motu proprio liberalizing the use of the traditional Latin Mass, what Benedict called the quote-unquote extraordinary form of the Mass, traditional Catholics were truly on the peripheries of the Church. Traditionalists endured being targeted from Church officials and fellow Catholics, all because they wanted to practice the faith as countless generations had practiced it before them. Labeled quote-unquote schismatic, they were given less respect by far more than heretic theologians. While most Catholics ignored the growing McCarrick situation among bishops and priests out of a misplaced sense of loyalty and obedience, traditionalists were among the few who spoke out, and they were attacked for it. It's no surprise that perhaps they had a chip on their collective shoulder. End quote. Mr. Sammons is putting it mildly, but he does nail it, at least in part. Add to that the full embrace of modernism and the casting aside of our moral foundation, as embodied in the promotion of recently of Joseph Tobin or the retirement perks given to the cardinal world recently. I mean, Taylor Marshall went into a lot of depth there, more than I need to. But most traditional Catholics will understand that Francis was not the first pontiff to form alliances with Leviathan that is being erected, just that his were the most overt of all of them, and, with, and that with each successive pontificate since the council, these alliances have gotten more overt. Paul VI famously addressed one body in the 60s and 70s, and Benedict was the Green Pope. It is why Francis isn't the crux of the problem for traditional Catholics. He is the embodiment of one that has coalesced into this pontificate. We recognize that Francis doesn't have the pretenses of trying to thread the needle between preconciliar Catholicism and what came after, made all the more obvious by his own statement saying that if you reject Vatican II, then you're outside the Church. Embracing traditional Catholicism is an act of love for the Church and an act of preservation by the Lady of the deposit of the faith. It is many things, but it is not a movement of nostalgia. And I could go on and on, but I'll leave you with this thought. Barron is the face of mainstream Catholicism. He is the face of the USCCB. 
If he says something, you can assume that he has considerable backing from the U.S. Conference of Catholic Bishops, and by extension, from the Vatican itself. He is Mr. Catholicism, and that should be concerning if for no other reason than to illustrate the central issue, which is this. That Barron reflects the attitude of the bishops. They are concerned and have unleashed their most potent voice against traditional Catholics. Aside from his mischaracterization of traditional Catholicism as moribund, when it is in fact thriving and growing in ways that the mainline church simply is not, his approach is a hint of things to come. Get to know what he is saying, because more bishops will overtly take his attitude in the near future if they haven't already. You can count on that. Those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe, and consider sharing it. It does help a lot. And we do have a growing community here in the comments that is anything but moribund. We'd love to have you. As always, pray for the church. Thanks for listening. I'm Anthony Stein. Ave Maria.